And today we are honored to have a distinguished representative from the Global Crusade with Kamoyo. Uh, it is a dynamic movement dedicated to spreading hope, faith, and also love to every corner of the globe with a vision rooted with compassion, in compassion and also a mission driven by faith. The Global Crusade has touched countless lives and ignited positive change in communities far and also wide. Join us as we delve into the heart of this extraordinary movement and explore its profound impact on individuals, nations, and also the world at last. I have a visitor and I'm so happy to have him with us. Um, welcome to the New Hope TV uh, program in, in the Philippines. Thank you, Pastor Noel, for having me here. It's really a pleasure to be here at your beautiful studio. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now, can you tell us something about yourself, um, just a little about your family, and then um, uh, how did you come to be connected in this uh, global crusade with Komoyo? Okay, thank you so much for the question. Uh, well, again, I am Michael Dada. And to God's glory, I have been ministering now for the past 40 years uh, with uh, Dr. Kumoyi. Okay. I am married, okay. and um, I have five children. Wow. And okay. the five of them, they are all adults. I have doctor among them, nurses oh, really? among them, uh, IT guru among them. Um, the, to the glory of the name of the Lord, I take joy and comfort in doing the work of the ministry. I used to be a banker. Oh, really? Yes, I actually took early retirement from the bank. Uh, about, uh, that was 1995, about uh, 29 years ago. Wow. Yeah, to be fully committed to the ministry. Before then, I was combining ministry and banking together. But 1995, I gave up everything, and now full-time ministry. Praise God, I'm happy with that. Uh, we're talking about the Global Crusade with Komoi. Uh, can you tell us about the origin of the Global Crusade? And uh, can you share us also who founded it and uh, what inspired or compelled them to initiate this ministry? Uh, once again, thank you, Pastor uh, Noel. Well, uh, the Global Crusade with Komoi was founded, just as the name depicts, uh, by Pastor Dr. Komoi. Uh, who started the ministry in 1973 with 15 people wow. uh, out yeah. of commitment, devotion, and uh, dedication to the cause of Christ and the call of God upon his life. And he has been able to develop and raise those 15 people uh, to becoming millions of members all over the world today. Uh, mm -hmm. The name of the ministry is Deeper Life Bible Church. And the Deeper Life Bible Church has representation uh, all over Africa, okay. in Europe, in North America, South America, Australia, and here in Asia. The only continent of the world where we do not have representation is Antarctica, where people hardly live. Uh, but uh, the Global Crusade was born again out of compassion for the salvation of souls and mm -hmm. transformation of lives which has been the passion of Dr. Kumuyi. And the, the desire to see people not just living a nominal Christian life, mm -hmm. but uh, a deeper commitment to the cause of Christ and to the life of God. That passion is what keeps driving him to see people converted, transformed, and live a holy, righteous, and upright life even in the midst of the commotions and the, uh, and the pandemic of sin in our generation. Wow, that's a great, that's a great passion. Um, <clears throat> seeing the fast changing world this time, and the Lord has laid him the burden, this kind of burden to reach out a lot of people. That's a great ministry that God has laid in his heart. Yes, sir. Uh, so when did this ministry start and where did it originate? Uh, the ministry originated in Nigeria, and uh, again, like I said, Dr. William Kumuyi started it in 1973, and uh, out of compassion for souls, he's a man that is wholly given to evangelism. I met him when he was 38 years old, 
and the man is going to be 83 years old in June this year. Uh, but then I realized that the, the passion, the vigor, the strength, the energy, the, 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 the commitment, the dedication, and the focus that he had far back then, when he was 38 years old, nothing has changed now that is almost 83 years old. And so the drive to see men saved is what makes him keep laboring for soul and growing the church, growing the ministry, and helping ministries across the globe. Irrespective of your church, his desire is to see the kingdom of heaven multiplied. Not just his church or one church, but all of us together. You've shared to us about uh, uh, what really has compelled uh, Dr. Kamoi to start uh, this movement. But can you briefly uh, share to us the, the vision of the uh, Global Crusade and also the mission? for our viewers to really capture. Uh, thank you so much. As we all knew uh, what happened 2019, 2020, and 2021, uh, the pandemic okay. that took millions of lives away. Over the years, Dr. Kumuyi has been passionate about evangelism, mm -hmm. but now, seeing the pandemic the rate at which millions of lives were taken away without any prior notice. That mm -hmm. prompted him uh, to have a deeper passion uh, to do something more than what he has been doing. He's been doing revival in different nations of the world, but now to take it to another level, to take the gospel to every creature, mm -hmm. so that instead of before people will die, they have the opportunity of hearing the gospel. So in 2021, before the pandemic was completely over, while people were still shutting down, he decided to start the global crusade. A lot of people felt this is crazy, but Dr. Kumoyi believes God more than man. Mm -hmm. And since we've been doing this crusade, uh, the Lord has been keeping everyone. And so the crusade started 2021. Mm -hmm. And he does it every month, from state to state in Nigeria, mm -hmm. from Nigeria to other parts of Africa, and now from Africa to Asia, from Asia to the Middle East. As a matter of fact, two months ago, he was in Saudi Arabia. Wow. And uh, he's going to be here in the Philippines next week. As soon as he's done here, he's going to UAE. Mm -hmm. uh, in uh, November, he was in India. Okay. And tens of thousands of Indians came for the crusade. In September, he was in Zambia. So he goes, he's been to Ghana, he's been to Cameroon, he's been to Togo, different countries. He goes from place to place because at his age, he felt there is need for him to pour out himself before God calls him home. Wow, praise God. <laughs> so he did a lot of travel, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. I want also to, although you mentioned uh, those places, those different countries, can you share us also again a bit about the expansive of this global crusade? Uh, approximately how many people right now you have reached with the gospel, and then how many churches have affiliated to the global crusade? Um, right now, between two, between 2021 and now. To God's glory and God's glory alone, we can say from statistics that those that have come to know the Lord through the global crusade are almost one million people. Wow, praise globally God. now. Praise God. Yes. And um, talking about ministries that have been impacted, these are now in thousands because even here in the Philippines alone, I currently have more than 400 churches. Wow. That in I the Philippines alone? Yes, yes. Really? In, here in the Philippines. And uh, I'm not sure if you, if you know, PCEC is working with us. Praise God. JIL is working with, with us. Uh, the Jesus, uh, Philippine for Jesus movement mm -hmm. is working with us. Kamakop is working with us. And so many independent churches are working with us, collaborating with us, both here in Mindanao, in... Um, um, Mega Manila has been awesome. Praise God. You know what? I'm so happy hearing also that uh, 
uh, the Christian and Missionary Alliance is in support or wants to partner with us in this ministry yes. on the Global Crusade? Yes. Uh, two weeks ago or so, uh, I was with uh, Bishop Kayes. Kayes, and oh, you yes. had a talk? a wonderful, wonderful man of God. Praise God. <laughs> Very humble man of God. Um, <laughs> uh, received us and told his people, we are in support of this crusade. We are working with them. As a matter of fact, he is going to be at this crusade himself. Praise God. So I would be very happy to see him there. Amen. <laughs> uh, I'm, just, just, I'm just curious, how many countries have you already uh, saturated or reached out to this uh, global crusade movement? Oh, my goodness. Uh, that's okay. going to be a tough <laughs> job for me. <laughs> uh, just uh, because, uh, again, I am based in the U.S. Uh -huh. And... Uh, I am not part of the team that goes from nation to nation. Uh, I'm involved every month, but I operate from the U.S. So, gee, it's going to be difficult for me, but I can just quickly mention a few I can remember <laughs> on top of my head right now. Nigeria, Ghana, Togo, uh, Cameroon, um, Republic of Benin, mm -hmm. uh, Zambia, Ghana, um Saudi Arabia really um yeah right on top of my head those are the ones I can just quickly remember right now wow praise God and we are looking forward to reach more countries for the Lord to this oh, ministry exactly yeah. exactly uh it's a task that must be done Jesus said go ye into all the world yeah, all the world all the world and preach the gospel to every creature that is the drive behind all that we are doing uh, at the Global Crusade with Komoye. Wow, praise God. I'm so excited. Uh, I can't wait to join this coming uh, next week Amen. Uh, of this upcoming. Now, talking about this upcoming scheduled uh, uh, crusade on May uh, 2 to 4 uh, this year in South Cotabato, uh, Philippines, do you have what are some of the expectations uh, for this event? event particularly in terms of <clears throat> sorry impact <clears throat> and also outreach um, our expectation first of all is that souls in their thousands will come to know the lord because the bible says except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of god there is a difference between religion and righteousness. So mm -hmm. our goal is to lead people to righteousness in Christ okay. Jesus. Number two is to impact the ministers themselves. Okay. Because it is people that are impacted that can impact their world and their generation. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And uh, that is what we have enjoyed over the years that mm -hmm. has helped our church mm -hmm. and ministry to grow. And um, number three, is to see the churches of Christ grow. Okay. Because as we do this crusade, remember Dr. William Kumoyi is going to come and go back to his country. But the souls that are won, we expect that the various churches mm -hmm. will take advantage of this opportunity, follow up on the people, and then integrate them into the church, okay. conserve them, and thereby building the kingdom of God from every church and denominations that are collaborating with us. Praise God. That's a great expectation, and we are hoping that uh, God would, his manifest presence will really work this coming uh, next week Amen. In, in the crusade. Amen. And we hope to empower a lot of churches and also to reach out a lot of people for the gospel. Amen. Uh, it's true that when the people have experienced a real and genuine transformation, they can also influence the community that they live in. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, could you share to us some of the details um, about the specific plan of the Global Crusade uh, for the Philippines? How do you envision this event contributing to the broader mission and uh, the, the broader mission of the movement uh, in this country? Well, our goal is not just to have this crusade alone but again to continue to impact the ministers mm -hmm. and the ministries in the nation. Mm -hmm. uh, the goal is to equip, uh, let me put it this way, we evangelize, okay. we equip, Good. Okay. we empower, and then engage. Wow. 
So that is the goal. Evangelize the sinner, equip the saints, empower them, yeah. and then get them engaged. Engage in the Send ministry. them out. Yeah. Teach them how to fish for Christ. Exactly. And so after this crusade, there is still a plan for a future ministerial gathering. Mm -hmm. So that from time to time, ministers are brought together to be equipped on how to do what we call effective evangelism. Wow. I'm, I'm so excited because it is also close to the, to the strategies of the Alliance, okay. which is to evangelize, to disciple, to nurture them, provide spiritual nurturance, then after that, uh, equip them for the ministry, Amen. and after that, engaging them also. That's right. Wow, it's great working together hand in hand for uh for the, the ministry for, for the kingdom of god <laughs> yeah aside from this crusade and you've mentioned uh, about the discipleship and also gathering pastors do you have uh, do, do you consider other strategies added to this uh well again from our end we will strive to plant churches because we are into church planting uh so that the people that I cannot win, you will win them. Yeah. Those that you cannot win, and other people will win them. Yeah. Uh, so that is part of the strategy. It's a kingdom strategy. Not just a one church strategy, but a kingdom strategy uh, to grow the church of Christ and to once again educate the ministers. Yeah. There are a lot of people in the ministry that are in need of help. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, the, as we educate and help ministers globally, we do it for free. Mm -hmm. We don't charge okay. for the training we give to people. And so uh, we'll still be working this out in the future to see how we can make that work. And then uh, in different parts of the country, we have ministers uh, conference together and uh, just be a blessing to them. Wow. We're almost close to this interview. Um, you have shared a lot about, uh, about the Global Crusade with Komoye, with Dr. Komoye. Um, let me also ask you this uh, question. Um, how does the Global Crusade adapt its message and also program to resonate with diverse cultural contexts encountered during this, uh, its global outreach efforts? Because we are actually diverse in our culture. And uh, how did you, in encountering this uh, diverse culture, how did you handle? Uh, there is an old saying that says, we can work together. It's a matter of understanding. Yeah. And uh, we also come to know that there is something that is called cross-cultural evangelism. And so when we get to every culture, number one, we try to understand what the culture of the land looks like. Mm -hmm. uh, as long as they are not in contradiction to the scripture, because the Bible is to correct every culture in the world. The Bible is one, and it's meant for the whole world. And so whatever my culture, whatever your culture, the scripture uh, supersedes mm -hmm. any and every culture. But with that said, we know we are different in color. Mm -hmm. We are different in our languages. And so our ways of life will be different, and we respect that also. And we appreciate that. As a matter of fact, we try to learn the culture of other people because that is how we can connect with them. That is how we can relate with them. That is how we can partner together. Wow, thank you very much. Okay, Pastor Michael Dada, thank you very much for sharing to us uh, information about uh, information about the uh, Global Crusade with Dr. Komoi. You're welcome. And uh, we are so blessed uh, to be part of this ministry here in the Philippines. And uh, we are so grateful, me as a Filipino, uh, is so grateful that you have uh, the burden also to extend the ministry here in the Philippines. And uh, we are just excited how the Lord will work it out through this partnership in the ministry. Would you like to say something? Um, um, just greetings to our viewers and also anything that you would like to say. All right, thank you so much, Pastor Noel. I'd like to first of all give all the glory to the Lord for the privilege and the opportunity uh, to do what we are doing and for this 
uh, divine connection yeah. uh, with New Hope uh, Media Ministry. And I want to say thank you uh, to you and to the entire crew members of New Hope Media Ministry uh, for having me here. And to all our viewers here in the Philippines, listeners, uh, marami, marami salama. Wow, you, can, uh, you have not <laughs> Tagalog. <laughs> uh, we appreciate you. We thank you. And I must say that uh, it's been a wonderful experience working with a lot of Filipinos uh, from different walks of life since we began the promotion of this global crusade. Uh, just like I said earlier on, we currently have more than 400 uh, ministers and ministries working with us. And that is a miracle on its own. And so I want to say thank you to each and every one of you uh, hundreds of you, maybe right now, you should say, in thousands have listened to me uh, from various vision castings we have done uh, here in Jensen, in uh, South Cotabato, Coronada generally, and in many other places. Uh, thank you so much for the audience who have given the support, the cooperation, the collaboration. I can tell you there is no other place to be at this point in time than here in the Philippines, especially here. <laughs> thank you very yeah. much. <laughs> thank you very God much. God bless you. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate every one of you. And I want to say, I look forward to seeing you. May 2, 3, and 4. 9 to 12 in the morning, Minister's Conference. 5 to 9 p.m., General Crusade. Come with sinners. Come with the sick. Come with the lame, come with the blind, come with the deaf, come with the dumb. No matter what the problem may be, our God is a miracle worker. Amen. Amen. I will see you there. Amen. And I will rejoice with you for your testimony. Amen. Praise God. So don't miss to come. The, uh, the Global Crusade, which is scheduled next week, May 2 to 4. Uh, we, are, we are looking forward to have you with us and joining us in this big event. Uh, Pastor, can you please, would that be okay if we'll ask you to offer a prayer for the Philippines? Oh, and my also pleasure. particularly for South Cotabato. My pleasure. Okay. Let us pray. Precious Father, we are grateful unto you because you are the God of creation, you are the God of power, you are the God of might. We thank you for your plan and purpose for the nation of the Philippines. For everything in life has a purpose. Thank you in particular for this period, this hour, this dispensation that you have ordained to visit the land, the nation of the Philippines in particular, because Philippines is strategic yes, to the salvation, yes, the conversion, and the evangelization of the continent of Asia. Asia is the most populous nation, I mean continent in the world. And revival in the Philippines will spread all around. Already, Philippines is open to evangelism. It's open to the move of God. So, dear Father, we pray that the spirit of the living God yes. will come upon this nation yes. and will turn situations around. Yes. Lord, raise up men, raise up women that will stand in the gap, yes. that will defend the cause of the land, that will promote the cause of Christ, raise up people, Father, that will speak the truth to life in the name of Jesus. I pray for the president of this nation. I pray for all the governors, all the mayors, oh Lord, all the counselors. I pray for all the ministers. I pray, Father, Lord God, for all the educators in this nation, the economy of the Philippines, the social life of the Philippines, the political life of the Philippines, every aspect of the nation, Father, we pray, will experience revival, will experience transformation, will experience growth in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, every hold of the devil upon this nation, I break and I cancel completely Amen. in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Everyone that is blind spiritually, Lord, open Open their eyes. Bring them to the knowledge of salvation yes, in the name of Jesus. And every yes, ministry Jesus. that is crumbling, yes, every Lord. ministry that is dying, Father, Jesus, let there be revival. Speak Jesus. life unto them. Yes, Give Jesus. life unto them. Thank you, Father. 
and for this ministry, New Hope Media Ministry. You said in your word that hope maketh not ashamed. I pray that they will not be put to shame. Yes. Every resources that they need to be effective, to be efficient, to be productive and progressive, Lord, grant unto them in Jesus' name. Send them help her from on high. Yes. Thank you, Father. Take them to places in the nation. Make them, Lord God, to be a beacon of light for the yes. world to see. Yes. Send the gospel out through New Hope Media Ministry. Yes, oh God. Change lives yes. through New Hope Media Ministry. Yes, and oh bless God. every listener yes. to their program. And all the staff that are present with us here, Lord, let your blessings be multiplied unto them. Yes. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. amen. Once again, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we would like to say thank you for joining us in this program. And of course, we would like to thank or express our heartfelt gratitude to the uh, regional overseer of uh, the Global Crusade with Dr. Komoyi. Of course, in behalf of Dr. William F. Komoyi, we would like to thank those who are joining us in this program. And then thank you, Pastor Michael Dada, for the time you have spent with us. And thank you for all the informations and also the prayer. God bless you Amen. richly. Amen. Thank God you. Bless you. God bless you. Bye God bye. bless you. Bye-bye. You are watching New Hope TV in the Philippines. Your local Christian voice with a global impact. Thank you for watching. Start your day with NatureMate, the number one pharmacist recommended vitamin and supplement brand. God bless you. I'm happy and honored to be here. Let me appreciate the Lord for our father, Dr. Tony Rappo. May the Lord bless you, sir. Thank you for the privilege to be a blessing through your platform. And Pastor Jude, thank you sincerely for this opportunity. I also honor every man, woman of God here present. May the Lord increase you in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Father, we pray that you open our eyes tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible declares that the entrance of your word gives light and understanding unto the simple. Therefore, we decree and declare that our eyes are open, our hearts are open to receive, that you will grant us grace and capacity to rise to higher realms in the spirit, in the name of Jesus. And that whilst your word comes forth tonight, let the sick be healed. Let the oppressed be delivered. Turn every captivity around like the streams of the Negev, in the name of Jesus. And we declare that as always, you will be glorified and lifted in our midst. For in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. May God bless you in the name of Jesus. I want to request that you lend me your attention tonight. I will be teaching on the topic, the mandate. The mandate. Along the lines of the theme... Um, I'm very passionate about helping to bring light and understanding to the body of Christ. Any Christian experience will remain a burdensome ritual unless at the instance of high level spiritual illumination. The kingdom life was designed to only find expression at the instance of light hallelujah the bible says in genesis 1 and verse 2 it says and there was darkness and void the darkness covered everywhere and then the bible says the spirit of the lord hovered around the face of the deep 
and verse 3 says and God said light be every other thing happened because of the presence of light hallelujah the Bible says that was the true light that lighted every man so when it has to do with the ministry of light it is for every man there are some things in the kingdom that the Bible says he gave unto some but when it has to do with access to light he says that light lighted every man hallelujah Ephesians 4 18 having their understanding darkened it says being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them this is a kingdom I repeat that thrives on the strength of light it takes more than desire to reign and maximize your Christian experience it takes more than a sincere and a well-intentioned heart hallelujah he says but the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 says arise shine for your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you I always like to quote this from Amplified it says arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you he says rise to a new light hallelujah so it takes more than desire it is the entrance of that light that empowers you by the Spirit the Word of God is the principal channel for the communication of that light and in John 1 5 the Bible says the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not in the name of Jesus I pray that beginning from tonight and all through this conference let it be a feast of light for you I'm praying for you that whatever level of darkness that has authorized pain and circles of tragedy bringing shame and pain to your Christian experience and making it look as though the word were a lie the requisite level of light that will elevate you to that level of prophecy receive it in the name of Jesus Christ someone say light one more time say light when you drive in the night the color of your car does not matter when you drive in the night the size of your car does not matter when you drive in the night in fact the type of your car may not matter about the most important component as far as driving effectively in the night is concerned is the quality of the light you can be driving a Rolls Royce you can be driving the Bentley provided there is no light you are in trouble the name of the car will not automatically cover for the absence of light hallelujah you can have a very very ugly looking car for sake of description the parts barely getting by but by any means if it has light in the night it will have dominion even above a brand new car that has a faulty light let me prophesy to someone again in the name of Jesus may this conference unravel the mystery behind the darkness in your life and empower you with the keys that will grant you access to true dominion in the name of Jesus Christ listen now the Bible says that was the true light that means there are false lights they carry a semblance of liberty false light talks of a body of knowledge that may make you feel comfortable either because it is spiritual or because it is pleasant to your ears or because it is sociologically acceptable but it does not have any potency in the spirit to bring liberty that was the true light there are false lights that was the true light so I believe that this conference is also an opportunity for us to edit our spiritual understanding as far as the results we desire is concerned what you know may not be what is needed to be known just because it is what you know does not mean that is what is required imagine that a student is writing an exam just because your answer is among the options does not mean it is the right answer are we together yeah 
so if it's a math um, example and you write you, you you got four as your answer and you check the options and find option a four you will tick a and believe because it was your answer it does not mean it's the right answer is the examiner that will now tell you no even though you got this your answer was there but it is not the answer you see the door you are trying to look for has a specific key the one you have may be a key but not the key to that door a house has many keys are we together now you may have the key to the living room and that key may not open the kitchen door if you want to relax in the living room happy for you but if you want to eat something in the kitchen you have a key but not the key that will open you many of you have keys but among the keys you have the key that is needed for this season it may not yet be in your hands I pray for you again in the name of Jesus may God who is the helper of men deliver that key to your hand let the weight of your glory cover us let the life of your river flow let the truth of your kingdom reign in us let the weight of your glory let the weight of your glow in Jesus name amen and amen so we're looking at the subject First Peter chapter 2 and verse 9 please let's look at a few scriptures first Peter 2 and verse 9 the Bible says but you are a chosen generation please say amen. amen it calls us a royal priesthood and holy nation a peculiar people it says we have been mandated to show forth the praises of him who had called us out of darkness into his marvelous light so apostle peter is teaching us here that we're a generation that was chosen a holy nation and that we have been given a mandate to show the praises of him that called us out of darkness into light second scripture please matthew chapter 6 and verse 9 matthew chapter 6 and verse 9 nine Jesus was teaching us on the subject of prayer and he said after this manner pray ye our father which art in heaven hallowed be your name verse 10 he says thy kingdom come thy kingdom come he's teaching the disciples how to pray and he says in your prayer your desire should be that the kingdom comes and then he says thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven let's look at two more scriptures Daniel 7 and verse 27 I'd like us to read this one together when we have it projected very quickly Daniel 7 27 7 27 ready one to read and the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the most high whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and all dominions shall serve and obey him hallelujah now dominion is a concept that if 
dealt with in isolation to the bigger picture of kingdom come may not effectively bless and edify those who are learning that subject dominion as powerful as it is is not supposed to be discussed in isolation are we together now dominion only finds its relevance when it is connected to a purpose that is higher than it dominion as powerful as it is is not the end itself as you will be learning dominion is a means is a tool that helps to serve a bigger purpose so in discussing the subject of dominion we must be careful up front so that we do not narrow our understanding just to the concept of authority alone authority and dominion that is not connected to a higher and a bigger a superior kingdom purpose will end up um, even destroying the person who has that understanding hallelujah The Bible is very clear as to the fact that God is a God of purpose that everything he does there is a purpose to it under the Sun it was the preacher in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 who said there is a purpose to everything even under the Sun so God is a God of purpose he does not do anything anything at all just for the sake of it whatever God does it is because it is connected to a larger and a greater purpose in Genesis chapter 1 from verse 26 where we get the whole idea of the creation of man down to 28 the Bible says and God said let us make man right it says in our own image and after our likeness two very important words the image of God is a spiritual quality it is what makes God God you cannot see the image of God physically are we together now the image of God is that spiritual quality and then it says our likeness the word likeness means to function like us two hands stand on two feet one head so God made man in his image and he made man in his likeness and he says let them the man Adam now have dominion over the fish of the sea he was not just talking of animals he was talking of realms and spheres are we together let them have dominion over the sea have dominion over the air have dominion over land and everything that creepeth upon it and so we see very clearly that it was at the back of the heart of God that man would reign over this side and this dimension of his kingdom but again i will tell you the purpose was not just to reign just for that sake everything in the kingdom is designed to reflect and to reveal the glory of god please write that down everything in the kingdom was designed to reflect and reveal the glory of god everything everything in the kingdom was designed to reveal and to reflect the glory of God that means anything created by God that stops reflecting his glory and stops revealing his glory is dead even if it is alive did you get that now everything in the kingdom this is a rule of thumb in studying the subject of authority and dominion and the kingdom you need to understand that everything in the kingdom was built and designed by God to reflect his glory and then to reveal his glory the plants man the entire creation reveals his glory if at any point in your life and your Christian experience your life stops being a revelation of the glory of God it means something is wrong are we together now I wish I had the time I would have shown you in Matthew chapter 6 remember Matthew chapter 5 Jesus began to teach 
um, in what we call theologically the Beatitudes. And then when we start from verse 13, he's teaching the people now. He says, you are the salt of the earth. Are we together? That if the salt has lost its saltiness, wherewith shall it be salted again? It is for no good. Are you seeing now? The salt is there because of something it is doing. If the salt is still there as a substance but loses that saltiness, he said it is good for nothing except to be trodden under foot of men. Then he says you are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. He says neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel, but that they put it on top of a lamp stand and it gives light to everyone who is in the room. Verse 16 now says let your light the word let there is permit allow by all means allow your light to so shine before not before angels let your light so shine before men that they may see your good deeds and and so it does not stop at seeing your good deeds it does not stop at your light shining it says that they may see your good deeds and that means if they see your good deeds and they've not started glorifying God, your good deeds are not good enough. Your good deeds must get to a point where it compels them to glorify your Father who is in heaven. Are we together? John chapter 15 and verse 8, Jesus again was teaching. And here's what he said. He said, um, hearing is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit. Say much fruit. One more time, please say much fruit. Hearing, that means this is how my father is glorified. When you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. Same John 15, when you go to verse 16, it says you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you. The word ordained means to legitimize your operation. I have ordained you to go and bear fruits. I'm showing you this scripture to buttress on this foundation that every man and everything created by God is supposed to reflect his glory and reveal his glory so that you know what to allow in your life and what to disallow does sickness reveal his glory does failure reveal his glory so anything in your life that does not sustain the power to reflect or reveal the glory of God becomes your assignment to get it out of your life. Are we together? You verify the continuity of conditions or things in your life by their ability to reveal the glory of God. So if God gives me 10 Naira, and that 10 naira can reveal the glory of God. It means it is not unscriptural if I ask for more of it because I have found a space for the glory of God to be revealed through it. Are we together? Yes. If having a child as a married woman gives an opportunity for the glory of God to be revealed, it then means it is not unscriptural to pray that you take in. Listen, everything in your life that fails to reveal the glory of God is a burden to you and a burden to the kingdom and you must stand in partnership with the Holy Spirit to get it out of your life for instance failure for instance mediocrity for instance ignorance for instance demonic oppression this it does not matter whether it carries a semblance of good we only test it against its ability to reveal the glory of God or otherwise if it cannot reveal the glory of God, it has no ministry in your life. Let me repeat it again. If it cannot reveal the glory of God, it has no ministry in your life. The prosperity that cannot reveal the glory of God has no ministry in your life. The increase that has no ministry to glorify, the, I mean, uh, has an assignment to reveal the glory of God, has no ministry. It's not whether it effectively bless and edify those who are learning faith and also